Hello folks, Jason Christman, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. Today I'm going to help out all you second year beekeepers. I'm going to give you five tips or tasks that you need to be thinking about real soon if you're not already thinking about them. And these are all going to play differently on each and every one of us as far as the timing. So what I've done is I've tried to reference with each step different things that are in bloom so maybe it'll help you um, with your timing on these steps as far as when to to do them when to start feeding pollen and serp okay here's my answer to that pollen sub let's see we're at the beginning of march this morning it's 19 degrees um rather cold looks beautiful but it's very cold grounds frozen solid um, maple trees aren't doing anything at this point so maple trees are going to be my reference for this pollen sub you can offer dry pollen sub outside of the hives um, right now because like today it's cold this morning but by this afternoon it'll be in the mid to upper 40s and there will probably be some bees out flying so if you make up an outdoor um, pollen sub feeder place it out away from the hives a little ways and let the bees go to that and that is fine um, what i would not do at this point is add a pollen patty and the reason is is once you introduce a pollen patty or any pollen substitute to the inside of the colony um, they're going to go bonkers raising brood and what could happen is we could get another big cold snap for a, a week or so and that could be very bad because the bees won't leave that brood to go cluster around food and they could die so don't offer pollen sub or pollen patties in the hive at this point. What you want to wait for is to start feeding pollen inside the hives is natural pollen to start coming in. So in my case, I'm waiting to see um, the maples pop open and pollen starting to come into the hive. Once I start to see that, then I'll feel a lot safer putting a pollen patty in the hive. Now, as far as the SERP, it's too cold to offer SERP. Um, in my opinion that just introduces too much moisture in the inside of the colony and when it's cold we don't need excess moisture in there um, that could uh, end up condensating on the inner cover and dripping back on the bees and that would be deadly to them so my rule of thumb on feeding syrup is i wait until hmm, let's see if i can think of a reference here maybe dead nettles um dandelions start to look for something like that then you know you've got a, a small nectar flow coming in anyway so feeding syrup isn't going to harm anything so that's that's my opinion on feeding pollen and pollen sub and offering syrup um, your first inspection for me i don't do my first inspection until early to mid april and that's weather permitting maples are in full bloom at that point I'm starting to see some purple dead nettles. Um, dandelions are popping up here and there. Um, that's a good time um, usually for me to do an inspection. Now, it's not every day that we have warm enough weather in April to do that. That's why I put weather permitting. If I get a day that's in the upper 50s um, or above, I'm going to go make that inspection or do inspections on that day and uh, see what the colonies are looking at. And while I'm in there making them inspections, that's when I will reverse my brood boxes. And the reason for that is, is over winter, the bees usually start out in the bottom box and over winter, they end up in the top box. So by reversing it, you put the cluster back on the bottom and you put the empty box, brood boxes back on top and they start working their way back up again. So I do my first inspection and I reverse the brood boxes early to mid April. Um, that's for me. Now you're gonna have to play with this a little bit and maybe make you some notes for the following years that way you know when each, each of these things that that's actually a good idea um, what I suggest you do with any of these steps is start making notes every year when you did this when you did that when you did this and um, if you use Google Photos at all that's an awesome resource to use all you got to do is take pictures of what you're doing they're automatically uploaded from your smart device to Google Photos and then all you've got to do is go to Google Photos and look at the dates of your pictures from the previous year. Hey, I made my first inspection on April 4th. 
hey, I added a pollen patty, you know, on such and such date. So that's just a little resource you can use. Um, adding honey supers. For me, that's going to be late April to early May. I've already made my hive inspections at this point. I know how the colonies are looking. The, re the brood boxes are reversed. And now it's time to get honey supers on before a good nectar flow starts. We know we're going to have um, fruit trees blooming here real soon. Um, for me, one of the greatest nectar sources I've got is um, the black locust. And that blooms anywhere from mid-May to late May. And I definitely want to have my supers on by then. For instance, here's a little video I shot a couple years ago on May 7th of the bees working the apple trees here on the farm. And you can see that these apple trees are heavily loaded with blooms. So, you know, it's at this point you should have honey supers on because any uh, surplus nectar they bring in is going to go up in them supers. And that's what we want. Making splits. When should I make splits if my colonies are strong enough? I start making my splits at the beginning of May. And we're still having a lot of cold weather at that point. You know, they tell us here in central Ohio, you shouldn't plant a garden until the 15th of May um, due to the last frost. So, when I say I make my splits in early May, I'm not making weak splits. I want to make splits strong enough that they can put up with these cold, chilly nights and sustain themselves, able to go out and uh, forage when the weather permits, uh, maybe go out to these dry pollen subfeeders and they're bringing in pollen. Um, if you make them too weak, they're just going to stay in the box and they're not going to really build up at all. So you want to make stronger splits. And when I say stronger splits, if I was to make a split and use nukes, I would make sure to at least add three frames of brood and maybe the other two frames would just be uh, nectar or pollen, um, something of that sort. So that's for me. Early May. So pretty much the whole month of May for me is, is making splits. But it seems like the splits at the beginning of May, they need a little bit more resources just because of the cooler weather. As we get to the end of May, you could probably slack back and, and do a single frame or a double two frames of uh, brood for a split, and that would probably be sufficient. Um, at this point, we're starting to get warmer weather. It takes less bees to keep the brood warm, and therefore more bees are able to go out and forage. So that's making splits. And... Uh, I'll tell you folks, none of this information that I'm giving you is going to be set dates because, like I say, it just varies for everybody. Um, here in central Ohio, I can watch people all around me um, talk about this um, locust flow that I mentioned. And then I'm like, what the heck? Ain't nothing happening here. I mean, it'll go from, from southern Ohio, I'll see people talking about it. And then I'll see people talking about it in northern Ohio. And it's like, what the heck? It just skipped right over me. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, boom, they're in full bloom. So you just got to be ready. You don't know when that particular rain's going to come. It's just going to push them blooms over the top, and they're going to bust open. So you want to always be prepared. And you should really think about um, making some notes um, of some sort to rely on next year. Just as a little helper, because, you know, this is... This is an all-new thing for a lot of you, and uh, even for myself, I've got to make notes. Um, do this this time of year, and this and that, and, and it's hard to keep it all straight. So notes are a very handy thing to have, and like I said, you really ought to check into uh, the Google Photos if you uh, have an Android device, because once you take pictures with your phone, most likely they're being uploaded by theirself to Google Photos. And that's a great, great resource to fall back on. Um, a matter of fact, I use an app called um, Google Keep to keep track of all these cows and calves back here behind me. 
And what I'm gonna do, I'll, I'll share that video with you. I got a video on that on my farm channel. I'll link it up here in, in the corner and you can check that out. But in this video, you're going to notice how I've taken Google Keep, and which is just an app for notes, and I've turned it into a way to keep track of each and every single one of these cows. And you could do the same thing with your hives. And you could leave notes on there of when you need to do different things. So there's a lots of different options out there that are completely free. Um, and a pen and paper is one of those. Um, Google Photos doesn't cost you anything until you get over, uh, what is it, they give you 100 gigabytes for free. And one thing I want to mention, if you plan to make splits, you need to arrange a queen for each one of those splits. So if you know about the approximate time you're going to need those queens, go online and start searching for people that are selling them and get them booked so that you have them when you're ready to make them splits. Um, I know for myself, it's usually late April, early May before the weather's permitting enough for me to rear queens. And during that time, it's still rather chilly. So I got to take a few extra steps just so that I'm able to queen rear. Um, it's usually, I'd say, mid-May to late May before I don't have to take all these extra steps because of the cooler weather. So, just wanted to throw that out there. I know a lot of people are big fans of walkaway splits, and I'm just going to go ahead and break it to you now. If you're one of those people that likes walkaway splits or want to try walkaway splits, you've got about a 30 or a 40% chance they're actually going to raise a queen. And I hate to tell you that, but that's a cold hard fact. Um, most of the, my experience with walkaway splits have been failures. Um, I have a friend out in California right now um, who just made a walkaway split, I don't know, two, three weeks ago. And uh, he checked it a few days later, nothing. He gave him another frame of brood. They still haven't done anything. So that's just pretty much my experience with walkaway splits. So if you want to guarantee your split's going to be successful, Go online and start searching for people selling queens. And I know down south there's a lot of those people. And out west, California, uh, Alvarez Queens, um, they're taking orders now. Um, gardeners down in Georgia, they're taking uh, orders now. So there's a lot of people out there that are selling queens now, and you can go ahead and get them booked. Um, thing is, you're going to have to know about when you plan to make your splits. So that's going to be a little bit tricky. You're going to have to sit down with a pen and paper, maybe a calendar. Um, maybe look at the extended forecast, um, all these good things to start uh, thinking about. And I know there's a lot of people out there that have been experiencing winter losses here after that big cold snap and they're looking for nukes. So I want to give a friend a shout out here. You can contact Combs Bee Farm in Marysville, Ohio. He has four frame nukes available. They're 155 total. You put a $55 deposit down and you pay the remaining $100 at pickup. Um, I believe pickup's the end of May, early June, weather permitting if I remember right. So for those of you looking for bees, get a hold of Combs Bee Farm. Um, they got some really good bees and uh, there you go. There's a shout out for Combs Bee Farm, Marysville, Ohio. So yeah, folks, that's about it for this week. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you throw me that big old thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please take a second to do so. Thanks for watching. JC's Bees.